What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Gold Guy YouTube channel. As you guys saw in the last episode, I got most of the bottom end completed and then my camera died. After the camera died, I just got all the clutch plates on. Now, there's still some stuff to finish up on the bottom end and then I'm going to head up to the top end, get the cylinder or get the piston back in, get the cylinder on, put the head on, and then we'll have this engine all put back together and we'll be ready to paint it. So, here we go. So I've gotta get the sprocket back on there. Since this is outside of the engine and it's metal on metal, I'm going to grease the shaft up so that it doesn't, hopefully doesn't seize for the next person who has to take the sprocket off. All right, first the spacer. Kinda just clicks in like that. And next, this uh, special lock washer. This goes on after the sprocket. That makes way more sense. All right, and then the washer. And then the nut goes on. I'm gonna shift the transmission into first gear to tighten this sprocket nut. Here we go. Let's see if we can hold on to the clutch and tighten that nut now. Now, there you go, there's 35 foot pounds. And then we just bend these tabs on the washer down and lock the nut in place. Okay, there we go. Next, let's get the generator back in. So the stator. And then the magneto goes on on top. All right, so here is the old stator that I pulled off the bike. Uh, two of the coils were actually pulled, ripped off of this thing. The ignition coil is the only one that's left, and the other two for, I think, one's for the headlights and one's for the battery. I'm not really too sure. But anyway, those two were ripped off, and this bike was pretty much converted into just a dirt bike just the ignition and no other electronics luckily when i bought the bike i got this this complete stator and it has all the coils i had to do a little repair on the wiring there were two that were cut so i had to solder new wires on and cut the connector off so i can replace the outside coating i did that and it looks nice so i'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this new stator i don't know if it's ever been used but it's in really good shape so here's the picture this is how the timing was set before i disassembled the engine so it looks like the stator is set all the way at the clockwise position so i'm just going to uh, tap these bolts in i'm going to get a little bit of thread locker on these bolts that are holding the stator on so my timing doesn't get messed up I also have some lock washers on there, so I think we'll be good. Okay, that's good to go. Now here's the old Magneto, and if you guys watch my other videos, you know that this thing went through hell and back. It is beat up, but luckily, this brand new looking Magneto came with the bike. So, looks a little bit different, but uh, pretty much the same. All the marks are in the same place. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this brand new one because this one may, it's probably fine, but I was hitting it with a hammer and it might've got bent. I don't really know. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and install this pretty nice looking magneto. I'm going to get some grease in the shaft or inside the magneto so that hopefully whoever removes this next doesn't have, it'll probably be me, but hopefully I don't have to go through what I went through last time while removing this. It seemed like the Magneto was uh, taking way too much force to be able to pound it in, and I think I found the reason why. So check out this Woodruff key. This is the one 
that has been in the magneto since I disassembled it and it might have a little bit to do with how difficult it was to disassemble. Um, it looks like it just kind of looks like it's homemade if you know what I mean. Like I don't know why there would be splines on it and it looks like there's sanding or grinding marks so I'm gonna try to pick a new Woodruff key up from uh, the hardware store. I got that new Woodruff key. Now we're ready to install the flywheel. Yeah, that one fits much better than that old homemade one did. It's flywheel time. There it is. Spins pretty good. All right, so I've got a lock washer. That's gonna go in first, and then the nut. So to stop the, so to stop the crankshaft from spinning while I'm trying to tighten the nut, I'm just going to take this little copper washer here and jam it. Well, not really jam it. Just place it in between these two gears. And since it's copper, it won't mess up the teeth, but it will be just enough to stop the crankshaft from spinning. Seems like it's working. All right, flywheel rotor nut. Looks like should be 29 to 43 foot pounds. So we're gonna do 35 foot pounds for that one. And there it is, there's 35 foot pounds. Next up, oil pump. All right, so here's the oil pump. I haven't done anything to this yet, uh, except for removing the feed hose. I'm gonna remove the two I'm gonna remove these two lines and then see if I can disassemble this thing and clean it and then rebuild it just so I know that it's gonna be uh, in good shape and it's gonna be able to pump oil because that's obviously very important for this engine. I'm not sure what that screw is for, but it's got a hole in it. All right, let's get these hoses off. Now we can pull this top cover and the bottom cover off. I don't know what's in here really, but let's go ahead and do it. All right, so looks like there's some kind of little plungery thing and a spring. Oh, there it is. And then this little thing come up, comes out. We got an O-ring on there. Kind of looks like a little, uh, little crankshaft. I just found out that this center part comes out. So, might as well pull that out. And that whole thing comes out too little worm gear and there's the other gear now let's get this thing cleaned up there we go nice and clean let's reassemble this thing alright so first this little uh, spindle gear goes in and then this worm gear with this little copper washer goes right in there and then the seal kind of thing goes in there it is and then this uh, throttle cable shaft thing also goes in next 
First this piece goes in. And then this weird mystery banjo screw goes in right here on the bottom. Maybe that's some kind of a drain plug. Gonna use some copper washers on the banjo bolts. First one that needs one is perfect, perfect fit. Okay, let's get the fill line on there, back on the pump. I can put the other two lines on after the pump's on the engine, just because I'm not sure uh, which one goes where. And I'm going to have to replace one of them with this one because the fitting snapped off. And there's that plastic piece that goes in there, remember? The last piece in this bag. There it is. Just had to get everything lined up and now it should thread in. Alright, there it is. Nice and tight. Okay, we're done here. Now we can get the gasket and the case cover back on this side. Just a little bit of grease on the surface as well. The grease also helps the gasket stay in place. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Let's get the screws in there and call it done. So I picked up some screws for the case. Let's go ahead and lock this case onto the engine. It is time. This is my screw tightening uh, method. Well guys, I really didn't think there was that much left to do on the bottom end of the engine. And at this point, the video is already like 10-12 minutes long. It'd be pointless to uh, put the top end into this video too. And also, I kind of feel like I'm done working for right now. I'm going to make the top end part in a different video. It's going to be its own video, so that way I'll be able to take... It's so a little bit more time, do it nice and slow. So that video will be out soon after this one. If you guys are following the Yamaha RX50 project, I've got a very exciting part for that in the mail today. So I really want to see if this thing will start up. Now I can. So stay tuned for that video, the first startup, hopefully, of the Yamaha RX50. Thank you for watching. Comment down below if there's anything I missed or if there's any advice you guys have for me. Like the video if you liked it, if you learned something maybe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Special.